Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of this video series and now I'm going to focus on aqueous uh, fluid production and its physiology we're going to mainly be focusing on these structures here so you should be familiar with the ciliary body in blue both sides I've also colored this space here which is the posterior chamber in orange which you can see on the other side as well between the lens here and the iris and the anterior chamber here in pink this corner here I've put black and this signifies the irido corneal angle which is here so this is the angle between the iris and the cornea forming the irido corneal angle so again in a bit more detail here's the cycle of the aqueous humor in the eye. So production is via the ciliary body. It is secreted by the ciliary epithelium into the posterior chamber. from the posterior chamber it moves through the pupillary aperture arriving in the anterior chamber So aqueous humor is constantly drained to prevent sudden rises in intraocular pressure such as in acute angle closure glaucoma. So there are two routes of drainage. One over here is the trabecular route. It's also known as the conventional route. There's the uveal scleral route as well. This drains 30% of the aqueous humor, while the major pathway drains 70%. So this occurs in the arido corneal angle, making use of the trabecular meshwork. into the Schlem's canal whilst the uveal scleral root aqueous crosses the iris and the ciliary body then collects in the supra sorry in the supra ciliary and suprachoroidal spaces from here on it then returns to the systemic circulation So back into the venous system. So just a quick illustration of how this process happens. Aqueous is produced by the ciliary epithelium, which covers the ciliary body, secreted into the posterior chamber, which is shown in orange here. It then goes through the pupillary aperture into the anterior chamber. Or I've put pink here and the two routes of drainage is the conventional route or the trabecular route which is located in the iridocorneal angle where I've marked black here this is the location of the trabecular meshwork and the Schlem's canal 
This root drains about 70% of the aqueous from the eye. The second root, similar where cili the ciliary epithelium secretes aqueous humor into the posterior chamber which is shown in orange again through the pupillary aperture into the anterior chamber pink here then instead of going into the iridocorneal angle the aqueous humor then crosses the iris which is here and crosses the ciliary body into the supra ciliary and supra choroidal spaces and both roots lead into the venous system now I'm going to talk about the lens sorry about that so now I'm going to talk about the lens again it is an important role in refraction of light focusing it onto the retina and carries out approximately a third for the refraction in the human eye. So the lens has three components. It is an outer capsule. This is followed by the cortex and the central nucleus. And it's very easy to vis visualize these structures. If you just think of an M&M suite, so if we pick like a yellow one, the capsule will be the yellow outer part, the cortex in the middle. I just put middle for cortex, or the nucleus is the chocolatey center. So that's the basic structure of the lens. So anteriorly the capsule has a single layer of cells known as the epithelium and this span out from equator to equator going anteriorly this also gives rise to the lens fibers these make up the majority of the lens volume So this is a diagrammatic representation of the lens. You can tell which is anteriorly and which is posteriorly by the presence of the epithelial cells. As I said previously, sorry, as I said previously, the epithelial cells or the epithelial monolayer lies anteriorly from the equator here to the other equator. So this here represents the zonular fibers which are coming up from the ciliary muscle the ciliary body this represents the capsule the yellow bit of the M&M this is the epithelial monolayer this is the chocolatey center of the M&M and for the lens that's the nucleus and this is the cortex here as you can tell the, these lens fibers make up the majority of the lens just arching over the center and the equator so I just label the diagram now so sorry these are the zonules other zonular fibers. This is the capsule, epithelium, this is the equator, here's the cortex or the cortical fibers.
and this last arrow here is pointing to the nucleus of the lens. Again it's important to get all of this right as especially in some diseases uh, for example cataract these help to identify where the cataract is and give a correct location you have noticed that I haven't mentioned the sclera or the retina or optic nerve in a in any detail whatsoever but I'll cover these in other videos especially relating to the pathology and just to finish off this video I just thought I would quickly look at the conjunctiva so this is the transparent membrane and macroscopically can be divided into three into three sections so you have your bulba conjunctiva you have your palpebral conjunctiva and your fornicio conjunctiva This covers the sclera, which is the white of the eye. This lines the eyelids. This is on the inner surface of the eyelid. And this is between the two. Loosely attached. To allow smooth movement of the eyelid over the sclera or over the eyeball. the bulbar conjunctiva and the sclera are separated by the tenons layer or tenons membrane thank you very much for watching the video please like subscribe to the channel and uh, post any comments which you feel necessary also feel free to give me any constructive feedback on how I can make these videos better thank you very much for listening